China can do things that most countries cannot do. People want to know about this very large country with this incredible gravity now. And that diversity has a lot to do with how great China is today. China should never try and be America or any other place. And it has its own history in its own way. Hi, I'm Mitchell Farkas, and uh, I'm an American, and I've been living in Beijing over three decades. It's a really long time. Uh, my wife is Chinese, my children, for all intents and purposes, are Chinese. And I encourage them to be proud of this point. This is a country finding itself, I like finding it along with China. You can't see it, right? Not now. And when I started making films, it's what I wanted to do. So this country supplied me or gave me the opportunity to make films. Thank you, China. If you look at China today, I think modernity is obvious. Growth of technology, big buildings, cars. But what is underneath all of that is continuity. It's modernity, but it's Chinese modernity. It's Mongolian, ancient Mongolian, actually ancient Yuan culture. And that's to remind them how amazing they are. How amazing the history is. That without certain elements of Chinese history, some other people's culture may have disappeared. But we started to think about this. Where do we begin this film? so many candles, it is butter lamp, they call it eternal lamp. After Genghis Khan died, guardians felt one light. The flame felt until now, 790 years never had been put out. Always felt, so they call it eternal light. It's meaning Genghis Khan's soul is always at here, it's yeah. eternal. We're in China now, and yet this has been given this respect and this status of Inner Mongolia and Genghis Khan within China. And the fact that it has lasted within this greater, greater picture, to me, is even more impressive. With the spirit of Genghis beside us, our journey in Inner Mongolia begins. Herding is a traditional part of Inner Mongolian life. Inner Mongolia's grasslands are so huge that animals still graze freely as they did in ancient times. Nowadays, motorcycles have replaced horses on the grasslands. But it's still hard to keep track of your animals in such a large place. Deer has spent his whole life as a herder. Today, he's trying something new. The herdsmen, using technologies that we found unusual, they were using satellite technology so they could look on their phone and they could monitor where their herds were. So they had to spend less time watching animals. Uh, 
，这图纸就很清楚。哦，就这样，就咱们这个方块是咱们这个牛角，这个你看，你就是现在戴的这个牛，这就这个牛角里面。就是这个哈。对。哎，那为什么你会就是想要用这个定位系统，然后还把他们就是愿意让他们放出去，而不像有一些可能其他地方？或许就圈养呢，就好了。不需要圈养，不需要吗？嗯，为什么这么好的草茬，它自然才是什么，又不喂饲料。哦，这样是不是会省一些那个成本？成本，降低成本了。哦，所以叔叔，你们现在已经不在蒙古包里边住了。They're living in an apartment building. Yeah, I thought they would live in a Mongol barn. But they live out there, so let's uh, let's do it. Yeah, it changed my whole impression. People are not poor there. That's what we learned. If you talk about provinces within China, though, and you take it from the same standard, each province or each place has its um, speciality, its expertise. Therefore, what I'm seeing now is that individual places, some of these poorer places and others, are starting to find their identity within the whole system. They will find through technology, through ideas, through opportunities, through connections, highways, trains and things, their own way of sharing the responsibility of building a country. I had been researching for many, many years about horse culture. And when you study horse cultures, you start to think about why were they so definitive? Why were they so powerful? Why were they so great? And we've been trying to tell people this, and it's just a small field, but our culture is also really important to the development of this magnificent country. We are proud of it. Some of those stories came out. I wanted to know where the bow and arrow remains in 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 Inner Mongolia, whether there's a place for this anymore. And we looked for a man who makes bows. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Come. Use this bow. This is Mongolian bow. We try. Okay, thank you. Oh, quick thumbs. Uh, right, there we go. Okay. La, la the jerk. Hey, la the jerk. Uh. And we're gonna break, break an ear here or something. Okay. Ooh. I really thought there was gonna be like this old man and with his glasses, you know, with his little grandson uh, carving one. But that wasn't Norman. That wasn't this guy. He had bow clubs. And he had a rows of bows on the walls, and he had all these crazy stories about about bows. This bow is a bow. This 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 is a bow. What I was surprised so about was that, that, that Norman was really making bows, the best kind of bows he could make, using snake skin and buffalo horns and ideas. And this helped us really understand why the bows were so powerful. And Adrian and him actually came to the conclusion that Norman told him that they could fire an incredible amount of arrows very quickly. 蒙古人这个放箭的速度特别快，蹭蹭蹭，那一分钟能放三十多支箭。So when one man is putting his gunpowder in, OK, you can fire thirty shots. 所、so、以这个东西就快。世界上啊，任何的国家和民族都使用过弓箭的历史，但是呢，在进入火兵器以后，他们都失传了。但是蒙古人一直流传到现在。Then you suddenly realize, my God. Bows, like horses, are a kind of lost idea. 
but there's no reason they should be lost other than we found convenience with new technologies. The bows themselves were extremely powerful and extremely fast weapons. And the funny thing is I think Chinese people get that. Probably the most exciting, most fun part was we went out to do some archery. This is our traditional weapon. And Adrian told me this, of course, he was always, our bows are real, their bows are small. But what I heard from him was this, we all like bows, that no matter where we come from, it immediately connected him to these people. It immediately made him feel comfortable and immediately made him feel there was something he recognized. And he was trying to find a way to put this together in his own mind. Why is it I'm in China and I feel I'm having so much fun firing arrows through a target with this guy Norman, who I can't even speak to. But somehow I feel comfortable, I feel at home. See, that's the key, isn't it? For anybody, can go there and just appreciate this little piece of culture. And that diversity gave each other something. They gave each other ideas, faith, science, all kinds of things with how great China is today. People want to know about this very large country with this incredible gravity now. After this project, I have tried to keep in contact with some of them. I didn't get a chance to really engage with. I really miss going there. If I wanted to go back, I'd like to hang out with Norman. I'm in Chongqing to shoot a documentary about where China's going in the near future. Uh, Chinese Chinese 
成果已经是变成民运会的正规比赛项目了。很好，谢谢你啊，诺曼。呃，有机会找我啊，我们在北京。啊，好 ，OK，OK，OK，、okay, okay. okay, 再见。一到这个春暖花开以后，呃，到处开大大幕大会，那里边到处都可以听见剑山的鸣笛声音。每年就是靠射箭可以养活的人也有了，他一年可以获得七八十万这个奖品。Therefore, listening to Norming, for example, talk about how his bows have changed, how. The new bows have made it possible for more young people, more people to, to get involved in, in archery. So I think the policy have obviously allowed the people to develop themselves and develop their arts. So they've actually entered a new stage of their lives where they're teaching another generation. I expect as China grows in confidence, and it's people get more educated and there's, there's more training and more opportunities that people will definitely start to look towards other cultures or older traditions. This is a cultural confidence. I'm on the trail of ancient secrets that came from the grasslands. At this Mongolian traditional medicine hospital, specialists are using a therapy that's hundreds of years old. Actually, the first time I got to the hospital, I, I was kind of surprised. It looked like a normal hospital. So many people go to this guy, or go to him and his, his team. This patient has a painfully fractured forearm. Like many of the other patients here, she's traveled from the far ends of the province to see these doctors. Because Adrian is a British soldier. He believes in science and the dignity of doctors and all these things. When he was watching the lady get her arm pulled out, and she was really, it's very painful, very painful sound. Ow, you know, pulling out. He was just looking at it with a kind of curiosity. I can see that, that, that maybe the jiu create a kind of uh, anesthetic, maybe numb the arm a little bit, and the, the, the noise distracts you. It's like, look over there, you know, pull, and it, it, it makes sense in some way. And this is a, they did this many times, so they know, they're psychologists, they understand how people work. It seems to work. Here, the people of Mongolia have always been the people of Mongolia. At the time of the war, there were all kinds of roads, roads, and roads, and all kinds of things that were taken care of. So, in this situation, the people of Mongolia have always been the people of Mongolia. 它就是古端，古这古这地就多了。With no easy access to doctors, the nomads had to develop techniques that would serve them out on the grasslands. The doctors here carry on a legacy that dates back five generations to a culture of shaman healers that developed their techniques on the nomad steppe. I think that we use what is useful. One girl was there, she got run over by a car. Both her legs had been busted. She's in the film. So beautiful. In my experience, all bone fractures of any type require surgery, an incision, plates, clamps, 
And it was quite remarkable, just by his apparent manipulation, that these bones were set nearly exactly in place. What they've done is follow expertise in bone setting. He uses a full approach to this and does it in a very cheap way. And that doctor gave her such, he did everything a doctor should do. He gave her faith, he gave her hope, he gave her love, and then he fixed her legs. I think that for him, he was fascinated by it. That's what doctors do, right? Wow,特别好,特别帅啊 听说,现在这个国家 What happens is science evolves as well. It evolves into something new. It changes. And I think that they feel very proud of this expertise, but they also feel proud of being doctors in China. China's role in this world today, I think, is to do things that a lot of other countries cannot do. That its culture, its traditions, its search for modernity, its aspirations, place it in a unique place to make changes and do things and to take an experiment. In understanding modernity and continuity, so we looked for a band. Their music was great. This is amazing. And I was looking, who, where's the whistle? I was looking around the whistle. Uh, 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 <laughs> so, can many people do this whistling or just a few people? Uh, There's a very few people. Very few. This one. <laughs> I think throat singing is, a, is an art. I think they were really playing to an audience because there are so many bands playing the typical lots of rock and roll and they just were going a slightly different route. So they appreciated both the idea of traditional music, which is great, I mean, it's, it's, it's great fun, but also the idea that they had to uh, present to a younger audience. <laughs> So they were really driven about, you know, keeping the history, the culture, the language, the music with the growth of technology. Because the danger with that, as in so many civilizations across the world, is when you go hell-bent on that, this all gets lost and left behind. So these guys seem to have it. They realize both is important. It's a real uh, rewarding to, to hear and listen and see. Their market may not just be local. They already travel that goes to Ulan Batar, that goes to Moscow, that goes to Europe. He 
here we see Mongolians, but other places you see all kinds of people. People are very proud of their provincial cultures, dialects. How young people operate in this world is to look for new things. And what they did was take an old thing and make it new. Every project and every film, the story really comes from a similar place. It's about my understanding of culture and relationships between cultures. And I can see a, a really great change there. If I start from the outside looking at this, China should not try to be another country. China should never try and be America or any other place. And it has its own history and its own way.